Thanks to Fizzy and the Slippy team, Melee is the closest it's ever been to mimicking a CRT experience online. And as I'm recording this video, that team is working on bringing a ranked system to Melee. Because of this, I think it's a good time to discuss what that ranked system should look like, at least in my opinion, and discuss why Melee desperately needs this kind of system in the first place. There's a lot to cover on this topic, so I decided to split this video into two parts. Let's start with why Melee needs a ranked system so badly. Right now, there's still a lot that's holding Melee back from being a tier 1 esport. Opinions vary as to why, but common issues the community brings up include the lack of developer support from Nintendo, age and accessibility of the game, issues around controllers, and perceived technical barriers to entry. I believe that all of these issues do matter, but I think one thing that doesn't get enough attention is just how difficult it can be to assess your progress as a player. Whether you're just starting out or a veteran of the game, measuring progress in Melee is tricky, and this lack of objective insight into your skill level can remove a common feedback loop found in most competitive games. One of the easiest ways to stay motivated in a competitive game is progress. You put in effort into the game, and that effort is rewarded by getting better. This in turn motivates you to keep playing and keep getting better. In most esports, ranked matchmaking is the most common way to measure this kind of improvement. But the state of competitive melee is pretty different compared to other games. Historically speaking, the primary way most people measure improvement isn't through an online ladder, it's through tournament results. These tournaments measure improvement through placements and the wins you pick up along the way. But tournaments actually have several limitations. For starters, tournaments are only able to measure your skill relative to the skill of the players competing in the tournament. This means that if you're a player in a relatively weak region, winning your locals does little to tell you how you stack up against the field. And even if you're playing in a strong region, you still have to deal with the problem of sample size. So that disproportionately affects low-level players. Let's use an example to see what I mean. Imagine a hypothetical tournament with 100 players. After this tournament finishes, 32 out of 100 players will have gone 0 and 2. Another 15 out of 100 players will end the tournament with two wins and two losses, and two out of 100 players will end with one win and two losses. All of these sets will be a best of three. This means half the players in this tournament got to play four sets at most, and one third of the players in the tournament only get to play two sets. Because these players play so few matches, there's probably quite a big skill gap between the very best player to go 0-2 and the very worst one, but tournaments have no way of measuring that due to their design. This is because every tournament is going to have a certain skill level you must exceed in order to win a set, and while it's impossible to know what specific skill level is required to pass the threshold I'm describing, as it does vary depending on the event, what we do know is that there will always be a group like the 32 players in our example that get left behind. For those players, tournaments measure skill in a very binary way. You either go 0-2 or you don't. You could be middle of the pack or a complete beginner, but a tournament lumps you in to that group all the same. Despite all of this, I do still think going to a tournament is a fun and useful experience for players of all skill levels, including those who go 0-2. But I just don't think tournaments should be the primary way that players assess their skill, at least for the vast majority of their career. So tournaments are a bad way to measure skill at the bottom, but problems with sample size even affect top players. Because of the way seeding works, it's common for certain players to run into each other repeatedly while never facing other players, even across multiple events. This is why we regularly saw Plup vs Mango over the past few years, while Wizrobe and Mango haven't played each other in bracket in over two years. On top of the problems with sample size and weak regions, tournaments deal with factors like seeding, bracket luck, and playing conditions such as access to practice setups and even the temperature of the building, which can make the process of measuring skill through a tournament even less objective. This is particularly frustrating as the vast majority of these factors are outside of the player's control. But for the record, none of this is the fault of tournament organizers or the Melee community as a whole. Remember, Melee is still best played in person, and despite the many flaws tournaments bring, there are still a ton of benefits to tournament play. For starters, tournaments are a really fun experience, and having to play in person actually makes Melee a much more social game than the vast majority of popular esports. So if you haven't experienced a Melee tournament yet, I really would encourage you to check it out when the pandemic is over, as they're a really cool experience, like seriously. I'm also not advocating that we stop using tournaments as a way of measuring skill either, especially among the very best players. Tournaments test a player's ability to play under extremely stressful conditions, so to truly be the best player, you need to be able to play under a ton of pressure. You need to be able to play and win while the crowd is screaming in the back background, and an online ladder will just not recreate this. But for the average player, using tournaments as the primary method of evaluating your skill is pretty rough, especially when the only other real method to assess a player's skill level is what I'll call player perception, which means assessing skill through self-evaluation 
and the evaluation of others. I'm sure I don't need to specify why this is not the best system, but it's not entirely useless either. One way to tell if you're improving is to look at specific aspects of your play. Maybe you're extending combos that you used to drop, or maybe you're starting to hit certain tech more consistently. But the problem with this method, on top of all the obvious reasons, is that a lot of situations in melee are affected by who you're playing against. The existence of defensive play in melee means that measuring your skill based on whether or not you're dropping combos might have more to do with your opponent's skill than your own. For example, a common challenge Falco players run into is that as they play against better opponents, those opponents know how to STI Falco's combos, making it much more difficult for them to follow up. This means that what used to work at a mid-level stops working at a higher level, and this can be discouraging and even confusing for those players. Matchups also play a big role in assessing player skill as well. Probably the most common disconnect in skill is a player who is very strong versus Falco and Fox, but weak against the rest of the cast. We've all met Marth players that just destroy spaces, but get destroyed by Peach players even though most of the community would argue that Marth beats Peach. All this makes it pretty hard for you or another person to judge your skill in an accurate way. You might play against a top Fox player who thinks you're pretty good only to play against a mid-level Ice Climbers player and get completely destroyed. Because of all these limitations, if we want to accurately measure player skill level and in turn motivate players to continue playing, we need a better rank system. Which raises the question, what should that rank system look like? In my next video, I'll answer this exact question and outline in detail what I'd like to see from the new rank system and what barriers it will need to overcome in order to be effective at measuring player skill. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving the video a like. That stuff really helps the channel and it'll help you tune in for when that next video comes out. Also, if you want to help me make more videos, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. You'll get access to early videos, netplay sessions, and behind the scenes content. I also recently started a community Discord server, so check that out if that's your thing. Link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.